Getting to where you're going is ridiculously easy these days. I mean, we all have high-tech map systems right in our pockets. A hundred years ago, you only had maps and a compass. And if you were a pilot, you needed to see the buildings or landmarks to see where you were flying. And if it was cloudy or dark out, you weren't flying anywhere. But that all changed when the king of cars started broadcasting beeps. Hear that? That's the sound of progress. In the early days of aviation, the radio beacon marked a new chapter in the history of flying and flight safety. Kristen Gallerno is the curator of communications and information technology at the Henry Ford. And she helped explain the buildings behind the beeps. The radio beacon house yes. houses a radio beacon. It does, yes. What is a radio beacon? A radio beacon helps to guide a pilot towards his destination by using sound cues. So it uses Morse code telegraphy and it beams a signal up into the pilot's cockpit and then he's wearing headphones and he listens to those signals to help him keep on his path. What you would ideally want here is a single hum. And if he heard that hum, he would know that he was flying the beam. And what that meant was that he was on course. If the pilot veered off course, uh -huh. then the pilot would hear a broken signal. Yeah. Either a... It would be an A, so dot dash. Beep, beep. Right, or an N. And that would be dash dot. Beep, beep. Right. If they were in on course, they would hear just a perfect hum between the two. Beep. Correct. Which, after a while, would drive the pilot crazy. Before the radio beacon equipment came along, people really tried to avoid flying at night because you were essentially flying blind. You had a few instruments, but really that kind of celestial navigation was really unreliable and really unsafe. So this really helped to open up uh, commercial aviation 24-7. The first successful test of the radio beacon was made in February of 1927 in Dearborn, Michigan. It was in the middle of a snowstorm. Uh, Henry Ford got one of his favorite test pilots, Harry Brooks, to make the flight from Dearborn's airport to Dayton, Ohio. They were so successful and so amazingly helpful to the pilot's safety that soon the U.S. government installed a whole network of these radio beacons all across the country. So there are about 450 of these at the height of their use. Even though Henry Ford did not invent the radio beacon, he helped to make it a reality. Ford hired a young radio engineer named Eugene S. Donovan, and it's Donovan's name that is on the patent. I'm imagining a map with all these laid out. You can imagine sort of like highways in the air, almost, like airways. And so Henry Ford not only contributed the Model T into the growth of highways, but also, you know, little known fact, he also did it in the air. Looking inside the typically unmanned radio beacon house, you get a sense of the progressive nature of this technology, which was used into the 1970s. This piece of equipment is the radio goniometer. Um, goniometer? goniometer? It sounds like you just made that up. <laughs> it's so hard to say. Um, but this is the radio goniometer, and this is really sort of the heart of the beacon hut. And what it does is it helps you to sort of like direct the signal. What's this called again? This is the radio goniometer. She didn't make that up. It's really no. called a goniometer. <laughs> If you want to connect the past to the present, think of the radio beacon house in another way. Is this early GPS? It totally is early GPS. That's the easiest way to think of this. When you think of going from one point to another point, we have modern ways of doing that, but the spirit of the beacon house is very much in there. Since the 1920s, following the beeps and recalculating until eventually you have arrived.